This is Girl Stop Playing, a weekly show that empowers black women to stop playing with their potential so they can live a life that they love. I'm Coriel, your favorite homegirl, and I'm on a mission to help black women make the money and get the honey. You can have it all as long as you're willing to work. Welcome back to the Girl Stop Playing podcast. It's your favorite homegirl, Coriel, here to encourage you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. You already know that I believe you can make the money and you can get the honey. You can have it all as long as you are willing to work. And today, we got a working woman in the building. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all are no stranger, right, to Dr. Viviana. We are all familiar. We know and love her from, well, one of my favorite um, shows, uh, Married at First Sight. Um, but I know that you do so much more, right, beyond um, just television. You are really putting in the work off screen and in real life. So please give yourself um, a proper introduction. Thank you. Hey, everybody. I'm so pleased to be here. I love your messaging and I absolutely believe in it and I see it every day. So I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. My name is Dr. Viviana. You can check me out online at Dr. Viviana everywhere. And um, being a licensed marriage and family therapist, I tend to focus and have focused for the past 20 years on working with couples and individuals who are having intimacy issues. So whether it's physical or emotional, this is what I focus on. And so working with singles who have struggled to find that, yeah, so <laughs> they need help. They need the help. It's, it's really difficult to look into compatibility and know who you should be looking for. And that's my expertise, and I'm here to bring it to you. Okay, so 20 years, I do not believe you. Like, I need some <laughs> proof. Like, that cannot, I, I just... Let's just start there. Um, it's wild. But I, I will tell you, I've always been very driven and I've always like had my eye on the prize and the goal. So I just, the minute that I could, I just went straight for my career. So starting my junior year of high school, I knew I wanted to be in private practice as a therapist. I didn't know I was going to be a couples and sex therapist, but um, as soon as I knew that, it was on. I graduated yeah. early. I did all the things. I love it. Okay, you were determined and intentional. Um, and clearly, you know, that has definitely gotten you where you are today. What would you say? Um, what would you say was, I guess, the benefit of being on a public platform like Married at First Sight? And I know we're not going to spend this whole conversation talking about Married at First Sight. <laughs> um, but I do want to talk about kind of how that has elevated, you know, what you've been doing. Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, I love talking about my experience because fortunately it was so phenomenal being on six seasons of a hit TV show with such an amazingly bold and unique premise. And there's nothing like it. There, there probably will never be anything like it. Um, and, and the colleagues and the crew and the people that I met, I love talking about it. So don't worry about that. Um, but you're right. I do so much more than that. And what I loved about being on the show, because at the time, I when I started, when I kind of put myself up for the position, I didn't like I didn't need more clients. I've always been packed. I'm very fortunate living in such an amazing, you know, living in such an amazing town. You know, Houston, it's it's so vibrant and diverse and people really understand that you can get whatever kind of help that you need. We have it here. So I've always been packed, but I did always think, well, there could always be more. What if I reached people that I couldn't work with in my office? What if, uh, you know, I was always doing virtual, but what if I could do more? And so being on the show and letting people kind of see a little bit of what I do behind these closed doors of my office, uh, it was a very unique, special situation. Um, what I do really, what I feel very grateful for and appreciative for is that people really loved it. They loved what they saw. And which means that so many people are now more aware of what therapy can be like with someone like me. And it encouraged people to get out there and get some help, whether they're individuals or couples. 
So I absolutely am intrigued by this concept, which obviously the world is, right? And I didn't even realize six seasons. I don't even know what season they're on now, but I can't believe it's been that long. Um, but this concept, for those of you all who aren't familiar, of literally meeting the person that you're going to marry at your wedding. Yes. Crazy <laughs> town, okay? Talk about arranged <laughs> marriages, right? For real, for real, arranged, modern day arranged marriages. Um, so the concept is so unique. Um, the fact that you all, you know, are experts matching people up, I think added that extra layer of like comfort and confidence because, oh, yeah. you know, in my work, um, I used to have an organization called the Single Wives Club and it was like single women preparing to become wives. And in the work that I was doing, I realized, and you tell me if I'm wrong with this, but most of the time your type is why you're still single. Right. Because we absolutely we're like we are trained and conditioned to look for and be attracted to and go after this one usually unhealthy <laughs> archetype. Right. And then we have like this revolving door of these relationships that end up, you know, in, with the same results. Um, and so I think that the people who go on these show on, on that show specifically are tired of the results they've been getting. They're ready to step outside of like their comfort zone. Um, and they want to trust, you know, the experts. And so I love the concept. Um, and I think that y'all had like a lot of success because of the intention behind it. And because, you know, people, mm -hmm. once you start creeping up on 30 and 35, you know, options start looking a little different. Conversations start sounding a little different. Um, and so what would you say, like in your practice with the individuals that you are um, uh, serving and working with? What are some of the challenges, like the most common challenges that you're seeing and what are some solutions that you can share? So on like a higher level, like surface level, I think that you're absolutely right. People are thinking that if they need, if they're going to find a partner that they're attracted to, they can only look one way, um, only be one certain, you know, height or I mean, like they get very micro when it comes to what they think that person needs to look like. You have not done the research on statistics and how unlikely it is that that person is going to want you back. Mm. So, so this idea that you've got this list of they have to look like this and they have to uh, talk like this and they have to think like this. You are chipping away exponentially with every checkbox your ability to find that person. And even if you do find that person, that does not mean that you check off all their boxes. That part, that's the, that's the tough pill to swallow. Nobody wants to it talk really about is. what if you're not the person that they want. Nobody wants to think about that. Right. And that's something that fortunately we did always talk about with the potential participants of the show is to say, you know, I, I particularly liked questioning them on, so what if they aren't attracted to you? How will you deal with that? Because that is such a big risk, right? Mm -hmm. That is probably the biggest risk is, are you going to be sexually attracted to them? Are you going to find them visually appealing? And that's something that a lot of these people determine at first sight. So the other piece when we're getting a little bit deeper is this idea that who you think you want may not actually be compatible with your lifestyle. So many times I find that when I'm working with singles, and I'll tell you all about this new endeavor that I have going on behind me, um, is that what they're thinking that they want, it mainly has to do with what they wish they were. Mm. I'm looking for a partner who's going to bring out my healthier side, who's going to bring out my adventurous side, who's going to you know, make me settle down. I mean, it, it runs the gamut. That is not what a partner should be doing. They should be enhancing your life, not making it or changing it. Mm -hmm. that, so do you find that these are more um, issues, these issues are more prevalent amongst women than men or no? The, the desire for something in particular? Yes. Yeah, so like the, the pickiness. Right. The laundry list of the profile that my husband must be this. Is that more of a woman thing or is this across the board? I think it's across the board from what I'm seeing. I will say that I think that um, it is more difficult 
because eh, let me just we'll just dive into a whole other thing but because men tend to be such visual creatures and they surround themselves and all of like social media and advertising everything you know pornography all of that even even just tv shows that are geared towards men they're highly visually stimulating and that can include the sexual side so by the time they're looking for something in real life in a real life partner they've seen all the options out there and it's almost like being able to build your car the way that you want it to be and whereas i think most women are okay with oh well if i want this feature and it comes in this body style literally and as if we're using the car metaphor i'm okay with that whereas i think that men can be a little bit like no 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 i want this sort of bumper and i want this sort of paint and i you know so i will say Everybody's picky, but the visual part of it is a little bit more difficult for men to overcome. That is surprising and not. Because if I just think just with people that I know, I feel like, you know, women don't mind a dad bod, right? Women don't care. Men don't have to meet these standards physically, at least, you know, that I think that women sometimes put on themselves. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess I'm not surprised by that. I could definitely. Now know. some men can, uh, some women can be very picky when it comes to that. And it, it's just, it's this hard headedness of, even if that person looks like that for this stage of their life, you have to remember, and I think as women, we're highly aware of this, but forget sometimes that hormones change things, your environment changes things, your stress levels change things. There's so many things, so many factors that go into your physical appearance that you cannot control like your schedule, you know? Like, it, I mean, there, there are things that you just can't. So I do have to sometimes look at some women and say, I don't know why you think this is so important to you when this is a flash in the pan. Yeah. Six pack abs can be gone in a weekend, <laughs> you know? Like, and we as women, being the, 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 the people that are highly influenced um, and affected by our hormones should be aware of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the, it's the same with like money. You know, like you could be rich today and one bad business move and everything yeah. is different. So literally- oh, One pandemic, one, one layoff. Pandemic, right? And mm -hmm. literally, we all just experienced that. So basing your entire future on something that's so trivial and literally might change tomorrow, I think is doing is doing a disservice. And it sounds to me like you are okay with giving that tough love, with having those those conversations that we need to hear. We don't often hear, but we need to hear. Let me tell you why. I've always um, understood my value as a therapist. I have always been confident in that. That's why I got my doctorate because I wanted to be able to say, I know what the heck I'm talking about and mean it. I, I've never suffered from imposter syndrome when it comes to therapy and in the help that I do with people. And so I value myself enough to say, I value your time, your energy, your money. I'm going to tell you like it is right from the beginning. And that's what they're asking for. So again, that's another reason why I feel like my client roster is so full because they don't want to spend six months getting to the point. No, let's get like there in a few days or a few hours. Um, and, and, yeah, I don't I don't have a problem with that, but I will say I'm very I'm always very respectful and we create a rapport where people understand that can see me. They know what they're signing up for. This is it isn't tough love. It's just being realistic and they appreciate it. That part. So how what are those conversations like? Let me just lay this out. The majority of my audience is single women. Okay. The majority of those single women are creeping up on 30 and 35 and so the you know the, the conversations are starting to change standards are starting to change things are just starting to change what are the conversations like in your office when a 37 year old single woman walks through the door and she you know spills out her heart to you and you know everybody's story is different but she's 37 she's single as hell like what is the conversation like because that's who's watching this right now Right. The very real talk is that a lot of these women are getting mixed messages about what they should, their life should be looking like. So it's a very full life. It's a very happy life. It is, it is fulfilling. But then 
on the flip side, they don't have enough room or space in their lives to bring in a partner mm. and to allow them to come in and really like exchange ideas and give opinions. And so it is very difficult for, I, I particularly have a soft spot for women 35 and up. Um, I think that they're put in, I, I'm in that in that range, I'm 41. So I'm, I'm that person that says, I understand how hard this is, but it will be worth it if you just give in a little bit. Meaning, yes, you can love your life, and yes, you can be happy with what you've brought in there, but bringing someone else on is going to exponentially, if it's the right person, that part. is going to exponentially create a level of satisfaction and fulfillment in usually all areas of your life. So, and these are people who want that, right? This, people who come to see me want the help, want to be led through dating and finding a partner. So they're very open to that. Of course, there are some women who are 35 plus who are totally fine with dating casually, um, you know, playing around and doing that. Hey, go for it. There's nothing wrong with that. Everybody has to pick what they want. Just like some people choose not to have kids. Some people choose not to, have, you know, work in a, in a corporate environment. Same thing with being single. So you mentioned something very important, which was the emphasis on the right partner, right? Because the mm -hmm. wrong partner will ruin your life. Okay, Let's absolutely. Put that it out will there. ruin all the good things <laughs> all the parts of your life, right? Everything will suffer, you know, with the wrong partnership. What are some of the ways that you can tell if this is the right partnership? Like, what are some green flags? We always talk about the red flags, but what are some green flags? Open communication. If somebody tells you something that they know you probably won't like, that is a great green flag because it lets you know. And of course, as your therapist, it would let me know that this person is willing to confront issues. A fear of confrontation, trying to avoid confrontation. Oh, okay. That is a red Flag. Some people are like, oh, I just want to spare their feelings. No, you just don't want to deal with anything that isn't sunshine and rainbows. And life is not sunshine and rainbows. Even the healthiest of relationships. I've been with my husband. We just celebrated 16 years together. Yes, yes there, have, there have been cloudy days, that's for sure. But we don't stay there long because we talk about it and we confront the issue. Would it be easier to not bring something up right before we have to go to a birthday party together? <laughs> Yes, but will we have we won't experience the same level of joy and connection over that birthday party if we don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. So that is a great green flag if somebody's willing to say something that eh, doesn't sit with you well. Another green flag I would say is somebody who shows interest but isn't necessarily interrogating you. You know, maybe it's okay to not know everything about them within the first, you know, uh within the first three dates. It's okay. Like, I don't even know what you would know to do with that. I know what to do with that information, but you don't. So it's okay that they show interest. It's also okay that they don't ask you everything that you would want to know about them immediately. A lot of people get turned off by that, mm -hmm. especially women. They're like, he hasn't even asked me, you know, to elaborate on where I went to college and why, what that experience was. It's like, You've got time. You've got time. If if you do all of that up front, what are you going to look forward to on date 8, 10, 20? Well, you know, after the first date, we're like on the way home, like pairing up our first name with their last name, thinking about like what our kids' names would be. You know, we, we get obsessive really, really quick, but that's a red flag for men, right? Don't be that obsessive woman. Am I wrong here? Tell me, Dr. Viviana, because in my opinion, that would yeah. probably scare, scare a guy away. I think it does because they also wonder, well, are you doing this with every Thursday night you have? <laughs> how many people out there have you put your last name with? And how many people have you said, I'm going to, you know, uh, go on a vacation with after knowing them for maybe a couple of dates? So I think a lot of this is something that I think a lot of men do um, is they they want to feel special. They want to feel unique. And no, they probably don't want to know that you've been dating seven other guys this month. Uh, I think for a lot of women, we do know that that's the case. And actually, the statistics are that, you know, men online are dating 
seven different women at the same time. It's a numbers game. And that's why I don't like dating apps in general, just speaking in general terms. I'm sure that there are some out there that are that are pretty OK. But in, in general, dating apps, it's just a numbers game. It's great for hookups. If that's what you're into. Awesome. But the trajectory for a dating app to actually, you know, help you to find the right person for you. Not that great. So I know that you have some resources to help us find the right people. So I definitely want to get into that. Um, but really quick to wrap up the conversation on just kind of the work that you're doing um, with couples. What are some of the most common, I guess, challenges that bring couples into your office? Uh, lack of sexual desire, a discrepancy there. So where one or both partners just don't have the desire um, for sex as much as the other person does or as much as they'd like to have. Maybe separate feelings about emotional intimacy versus physical. The emotional is through the roof and the physical isn't or vice versa. That Those are the main things that I see. Of course, infidelity is a big one that I see. I work a lot a lot of couples that go through this and 70% of couples that experience infidelity do end up staying together. And if they're, I have found that if they work through it with someone like me, they tend to feel at least half of them tend to feel much better. And that's across the board. But in my clients, most of them end up feeling so much better about the trajectory of their relationship. And after having worked through it, because it can uncover so many different things. It's not usually just one instance. It's an overall, you know, underlying issue that we need to work through. And once they've worked through that, they can feel a lot better. I actually had um, saw a divorce attorney um, who said, and tell me what if this is your experience, that the majority of divorces filed for infidelity are filed on behalf of the women. And that in her experience, men don't leave women for cheating as quickly or as often as women leave men for cheating. And I was kind of surprised by that. Um, I'm not, a, I'm not surprised. I, I do think that, I think that women tend to kind of paint men as like, we, we still live in a society where we say like men cheat. That, men and, cheat. and so, um, so we can, we can say, yes, that's that's the case but it usually when it happens multiple times now there's a lot of pressure from society if you've shared it with friends um or if it's a very public thing there's a lot of external pressure saying girl leave mm -hmm. and and that's the the pride piece and the piece of like i i just can't like i can't look at myself in the mirror that's something that i think a lot of women are taking much more seriously as well they should i mean this is a very unique and uh, personal decision to ever divorce, but especially over infidelity. I, I will say that through therapy, I have not noticed that men or women um, are filing for divorce unless it's something that is followed by news that it was chronic. Um, if there's some sort of compulsiveness or compulsivity that, that they cannot overcome. Um, but yeah, I think most of the time, women will get to a place where that's the case. Now, now that I'm thinking about it, though, there are a lot more men who can't get over it. They may not fall for divorce, but I don't think they can get over it. Um, and that, I think, has more to do with just possessiveness over women's sexuality. Yeah. And all yeah. of a sudden being compared to possibly someone else's sexual abilities, maybe the size of their penis, like all of that. I think that they really struggle with that. So maybe they don't file, but I think they struggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was I was just wondering, had you seen, had you experienced anything similar? Because that's what I would think that the your male ego is just damaged so bad that you cannot get over this. And is that what's actually stopping you from filing divorce, you know, filing for divorce? Because then it's like you've you've lost kind of mm -hmm. thing. You know, I'm just that I was yeah, just curious. Yeah. It's, it's very complicated. I can't ever tell you of an infidelity case that was not extremely gray area and that doesn't go up and down, right? It's a very much a roller coaster. And that's why I think it is so important for people to get help the minute that they either suspect or discover or are told 
um, about an infidelity situation, I think it's so important that they get professional help if they want any sort of chance at working through it. That part. Okay, so let's get into the singles, okay? Because we got this vivid relationship. So what is going on? People, the people want to know. So what is vivid relationships? How are you helping singles? So Vivid Relationships is my new matchmaking agency. It is not traditional matchmaking. It I I can't get behind traditional matchmaking um, as much as I would have liked to. I started doing research on it, of course, when I was a matchmaker on Married at First Sight. But even then, people would ask all the time in my DMs, in my emails, on my website, everything, Dr. V, when can you match me? I don't want to be on TV but will you match me? And I just kept saying, no, I, I'm a therapist. I only do that for the show and this and that. And before I knew it, I realized, okay, I had back in like 2000, who knows, 11, I don't know, so long ago, I created a premarital counseling program. And that was because I wanted couples. I didn't, I didn't want to only see couples that were on the verge of divorce. You know, if you're going to do something for a really long time, you have to protect yourself as a professional from burnout. So I was like, I need to see people who are still really excited about being married and happy and this and that. Um, so we did that. And then I started thinking about it in terms of like, I would see singles for therapy and they would be like, I just wish you know me so well. I wish you could help me find somebody who's compatible. And finally, just in the past year or so, you know, I, I left the show and I, and I was getting so many requests and I thought, why can't I help? create healthy couples from the very beginning. I have a unique like sense of of what compatibility looks like, what healthy relationships can go through, the qualities that people have or don't have. I, I have all this education, I have all this experience. Why not share those skills with singles from the very beginning? And once that came into my head and I started sharing the idea with people, every single person I came up to and, and talked about this said, I know somebody that you can help. That is amazing. Sign me up. So it's available. Um, go to vividrelationships.com. It is this program because it is a program and that's what makes it very different than traditional matchmaking. This program you, that I've created. Can you find traditional matchmaking for someone who may not know? Like traditional, what is oh. that? Like? So traditional matchmaking, if you do a search, um, what you'll find is that traditional matchmaking is all about asking you what you want and then helping to find that person. So that checklist we were talking about, it's all about saying you want this, 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 and this. Well, let me go into my database of singles and see if I can find this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. But there isn't this depth to it. There isn't this knowledge that goes behind it to say, and y'all could be a healthy couple because of this, this, and this. It is very much like about dating. And um, I think anybody can have a good date. And with the Dr. Viviana Method for Matchmaking, it is not about having a good date. It's about having an intentional date that helps you really get to know yourself so much that then when you go on these dates, you know who you should be looking for and why. It's so important to know who you should be looking for. And that's what we're all about. Anybody can go on a good date. Believe me, I, I've seen, <laughs> I've heard, and I've seen so much. Um, and through this process, you're going to leave the process knowing yourself. So even if you want to jump back on the dating apps, even if the dating series that we put you through doesn't end up with being like a really great match for you long term, you will now know, okay, but I know what I should be looking for. And that's, that's amazing. And that's, that is what comes from years of experience of working with couples. Um, for some other people, you know, these dating agencies, they guarantee like three dates a month, right? And a lot of them have I mean, everybody's been guaranteed those three dates. So they'll just be like, well, we owe Jack this date and we owe Jill this date. Well, let's put Jack and Jill together. And a lot of them get sued because of that, because they are promising good, good matches. Left How over. can you promise that? You don't even really know these people. Yeah. So we're doing the vetting, the screening, the interviews, the evaluations, the virtual visits, like everything to really make sure that the people that we're working with, we, we really know them so that then we can find somebody that then we also get to know very well and we match them up. So this is male and female. Everyone. 
everyone, um, non-binary, uh, heterosexual, homosexual, pansexual, all of so that. We're, 2023, I forgot I had to say all of that. Help me, I'm sorry. Jesus. So it's, it's for everyone who is truly single, and we will check and we will talk to people and we will do all that, who are truly single and dedicated to finding long-term relationships. Again, if you want to hook up with people, go for it, but there's lots of availability online for that. You don't need to pay for that. <laughs> or some maybe. of you might, I don't know. <laughs> Depending on your preferences, maybe. But I, going love on. I love this though, because um, to your point, yes, people are on the dating apps, not even necessarily there to hook up, but that's what they're falling into because that's what they're finding. So then mm -hmm. you're literally like setting yourself back because now you're adding more bodies, more baggage, more, you know, like all of this stuff when your intention was truly to date to marry, but now you're just dating to date and it's just adding like more trauma <laughs> each time. Right, and baggage, exactly. Yeah. Well, the other piece of it that I think is important for, for all of you to know is that we're not a database. We don't just say, hey, add yourself. Everyone that um, is potentially going to work with us has to apply and have, has to go through an interview process. The reason for that is because we know that people do better in relationships when they've gone through and worked through their issues prior to getting into the relationship. We are therapists, so we understand the value in that. So because we don't do therapy at Vivid Relationships, we will make sure that you get that help beforehand uh, wherever you are in the country. There are amazing therapists over there. And once you've worked through those issues and you get a little note from your therapist saying you have, then we can bring you on if we think you're a good fit. But this is about applying, not registering. I love that. Okay. Talk about quality control. Okay. <laughs> you have to, you, I mean, truly, if, if marriage to me is, is just not taken seriously enough, right? To your point earlier about prep, that was the whole premise with the single wives club was yes, you're single now, but you want to be a wife. Let's work on it. Now, let's not wait and try to figure it out later, right? With every and you're other right. marriage, marriage is very serious. Um, you know, I think I, I think we got a lot of flack. Um, sometimes I would do interviews where people would be like, if you think marriage is so important, then why would you do this? But I also know that dating is so difficult. I, I mean, who am I to tell somebody, no, you need to go through another 10 years of being lied to, catfished, dating bots, now chatting with AI instead of real people. Like, no, I'm not going to tell them that they can do that when I know that at least the people we're working with are real people and they've been you know, vetted and done as much background as possible. You know, that's I'm going to say, look, you could possibly find that person within this process that was married at first sight. Um, and now in a very much more in depth, you know, vetted background, all of that, um, checking for divorce decrees. If somebody says they're divorced, we're going to make sure they are. <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of have to be inspector gadget. Dr. Viviana is going to do the, the dirty work for yeah. you. That's yeah. going to save some people some time. Okay. I Again, love it. It's, it's not for everybody, but for the people, especially like you were saying, 35 plus, I don't want them to wait another five years to find out that this person isn't who they said they were. And, you know, it's all lip service. No, we're going to talk to the people around you. You're going to talk to the people around them. Like there's, there's a lot that goes into this that I think can really help get to, are y'all compatible or not? a lot quicker without wasting time i love that and we don't have no time to waste so vividrelationships.com that's right yeah and online i post a lot um instagram is where you'll find out where my singles events are i'm uh going on a little bit of a tour across the country to let people know and to meet all of you singles who are interested so check that out um at vivid relationships on instagram Vivid Relationships on Instagram, vividrelationships.com. And I will make sure all of that is down below in the show notes. If the tour is coming to Atlanta, definitely keep me posted. I would love to share it with the people. I would love to come and support. Um, Cause I'm telling you, I ain't no matchmaker, but people have been asking me to hook them up for years. I, that's not my ministry. So I'm sending well, them. My team is going to have to talk to your team and maybe we'll add that stop. Yes, let's add it because Atlanta needs you. Okay, I'm telling you, when the, when the people see this, 
they're going to be beating down your door, especially because of like the legitimacy of the process. And people are tired of dating apps. Like they are tired of the wild, wild west. Just put it. You know what they all say? The reason I know that they're tired of dating apps, at least the ones that I've heard about, because I I can't say that they're all bad, but it's that I know that it's bad because they jump in and then jump right out. And then they jump in and then they jump right out. I'm like, okay, that's like I get desperate enough to add it back to my phone. It's obviously it's not it's not doing much. So this is this is so needed. Um, and so I'm excited about all of not just excited for you because this is an amazing idea, but I'm also excited about the relationships, the healthy relationships that are going to um, come through this because, you know, two healed, healthy people like y'all are unstoppable. Y'all are unstoppable. So this work is so necessary. Um, I definitely um, know that it's going to be valuable to so many people and you are about to change some lives. So I'm excited for you. I'm excited for everybody tuned in that is headed to vividrelationships.com right now to apply, not register. Okay. But apply because it's a process. Um, So Dr. Viviana, if there's anything else that they need to know, please let them know where they can find you personally though, if they want to follow you personally. And if yeah, you so you exactly them, let them know. Yeah, that. head over to uh Dr. Viviana, spell out Dr. Viviana.com on my socials. I'm Dr. Viviana. I also have a book if you're not single or even if you are, but you want to know how to maintain healthy physical intimacy for the long term, get my book before intimacy styles. It is available online. It's an ebook now, so you can check that out. And you can do that at drviviana.com or for intimacystyles.com. But yeah, I just, I love love and I want everyone to find it and keep it. Yes. And you deserve it. Listen, you deserve to be loved properly. So Dr. Viviana has the resources for you. You have no excuse. Okay. If you got Mm -hmm. access to the internet, which I know you do because you are watching this then you got what you need to be able to go apply. So don't come over here complaining about it. Ain't no good man. Go over there to Dr. Viviana and find you one. Okay. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Girl Stop Playing. Make sure you share this episode with a single friend. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next week.